Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be learning how to solve trigonometric equations. As usual, there are some exam questions linked in this video's description that you can try afterwards. So let's imagine we were going to solve, for x values in between 0 and 360 degrees, an equation which says cos x equals 0 0.8. Now based on your knowledge from GCSE Maths, you should already know that you could inverse cos both sides of this equation and you'll get x equals inverse cos of 0 0.8. You can then type this into your calculator, and it will give you the answer, x equals 36.9 degrees, which I've rounded off to one decimal place. So that is one solution to the equation, is certainly between 0 and 360 degrees. However, it isn't the only solution to this equation. To find the other solution, we're going to look carefully at the graph of y equals cos of x. So if we draw some axes like this, the graph of y equals cos of x starts up here at 1, then it comes down to 0 at 90, negative 1 at 180, back to 0 at 270, and then back at 1 at 360. This is the graph of y equals cos of x. Now our equation was when cos of x equals 0 0.8. So let's mark on 0 0.8 on the y-axis, and see where this function gives us an output value of 0 0.8. To do this we just draw a horizontal line at 0 0.8, and you can see there are two intersections. The first of those is the one we've already found. You can see it's less than 90 and bigger than 0, so there's our 36.9 degrees. The question is, what is this other solution on the right hand side? To find this we use the symmetry of the cos graph. The cos graph is symmetrical about 180 degrees. You can imagine there's a mirror line down the middle of this graph. This means this distance here, from 0 to 36.9 degrees, must be the same distance from 360 back to our solution. So we can just do 360, take away 36.9, and we find the other solution which is 323.1 degrees. This is also between 0 and 360, so it's a valid solution, so we get two solutions to this equation, 36.9 degrees and also 323.1 degrees. Let's have a look at a second one, so this time cos of x equals negative 0.2. We start just by doing inverse cos of negative 0.2, and with your calculator that gets you 101.5 degrees. Again, I'm going to round all of these to one decimal place. Now we mark onto the axes negative 0.2, so that goes about here, and draw ourselves a horizontal line. And you'll see again there are two intersection points. One of those we have, 101.5, that must be this left one here, and we need to find the other one over on the right hand side. Once again we can use the same symmetry property of the cos graph. The horizontal distance here, from 0 to our solution is 101.5, that must be the same distance from 360 back to our second solution. So we do 360, take away 101.5, and we get the other solution, 258.5. So we have two solutions, 101.5 and 258.5. The questions we've looked at so far will be on the calculator paper. However, you could be given questions like this on the non-calculator paper too. This is testing your knowledge of exact values of trig functions. So for this one, we start by doing x equals inverse cos of 0 0.5, but you should already know the inverse cos of 0 0.5 is 60 degrees, since cos of 60 equals 1 half. So one of the solutions is 60 degrees. Let's use the graph to find the other one. So we're trying to find when cos of x equals 0 0.5, so we mark 0 0.5 on the axis, draw on a horizontal line and we'll find the two intersections, the one we've already got which is 60 degrees, and then there's one over on the right hand side as well. We use the symmetry of the graph, so from 0 to 60 here is 60 degrees, that must be the same distance from 360 back to our solution, so 360 take away 60 is 300 degrees. So we have two solutions, 60 degrees and 300 degrees. Remember this one you'd need to be able to do completely without a calculator. Now let's look at some equations with sine. Well you'd start in the same way, so inverse sine of 0 0.3, which gives you 17.5 to one decimal place, and now let's draw the graph of sine of x. So sine of x starts at 0, it goes up to 1 at 90, back down to 0 at 180, then down to negative 1 at 270, and back to 0 at 360. So this is the graph of y equals sine x. Now we'll do the same thing as we did before, so we're trying to find sine x equals 0 0.3, so let's mark 0 0.3 on the y-axis. Now we draw a horizontal line, and we find there are two intersections again. We can already see one of those, that's our 17.5 on the left, but what's this solution over here on the right? Now the symmetry of the sine graph is different to the cos graph. The line of symmetry would be at 90 degrees. So this time we're looking for this horizontal distance here from 0 to 17.5 is the same as the horizontal distance 
from 180 back to our solution. So it's not 360 this time. So to find the other solution, we do 180, take away 17.5, and that gives you 162.5. So we have two solutions, 17.5 and 162.5. This is another example of sine. Again, this would be a non-calculator question. So do inverse sine of square root 2 over 2. You should know that this is 45, since sine of 45 is square root 2 over 2. So for this equation, we were finding sine x equals root 2 over 2. We can mark that on our axis here and draw on a horizontal line and we get two solutions. The first of those is 45, we know that one. And we have this second one over on the right hand side. From 0 to 45 is 45 degrees. That must be the same distance from 180 back to our solution. So we do 180, take away 45, which is 135. So you get two solutions, 45 and 135. And again, this one would be non-calculator. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky. When you're solving an equation with sine but equal to a negative value, something different happens. So let's go ahead and do inverse sine of negative 0.4. If you type this into your calculator, it will tell you negative 23.6 degrees. Now we need solutions from 0 to 360 degrees, so this solution isn't okay. So what's going on? Well let's draw the usual line onto our graph at negative 0.4. So that would be somewhere like here, and we draw that horizontal line and we can see the two solutions that we want. However, we don't have either of those solutions at the minute, we have negative 23.6. So what we're going to do is extend the sine graph backwards. Remember the trigonometric graphs go on forever and ever in both directions, so let's extend this one backwards. It will continue like this and come back to the axis at negative 180 degrees. Now let's also extend our black horizontal line and you'll find there are two more solutions. We don't want either of these two solutions because they're not between 0 and 360. However, one of them is a solution that we have. You can see this one here will be negative 23.6 degrees. Now it may not make much sense at this point, but we're going to find the other solution as well, even though it's negative and not in the range we want. We're going to use some symmetry again. So from here to negative 23.6 is a distance of 23.6, which must be the same distance from negative 180 to the new solution here. So we do negative 180 plus 23.6, and we find that this solution is negative 156.4. So we found another solution, not one we want, but we found another one. Now there's a really important property of this sine graph. It applies to the cos graph as well, but it repeats every 360 degrees. So to find those solutions that I do want on the right hand side, I'm just going to add 360 degrees to these two solutions that I have. So if we start with negative 156.4 and add 360 to it, we end up with this solution here at 203.6 degrees. So we did negative 156.4 plus 360, which is 203.6. And we'll do the same with the other one. So negative 23.6, we add 360 to it, and we get this one. So negative 23.6 plus 360 is 336.4. So we've now found the two solutions we wanted. They're both between zero and 360, and they are 203.6 degrees and 336.4 degrees. So it's really tricky when you have sine and negative values on the right hand side of the equation. Now what about tan? So we need to look at some tan equations as well. Let's look at tan x equals 3.5. We start in the usual way, we do inverse tan of 3.5 and that gives you 74.1 degrees to one decimal place. Now let's draw the graph of y equals tan of x. You should know that there are two asymptotes on the graph of tan x. You can see those at 90 and 270 degrees, and the graph goes like this. So we're trying to solve this equation equal to 3.5, so we'll draw a horizontal line at 3.5, somewhere about here, and we get two solutions. So one of those is our 74.1, that's going to be the left-hand solution here, and we need to find the right-hand solution. Now tan is actually quite nice because tan repeats every 180, not 360, but 180. So we add 180 to 74.1, and we just get the next solution. So 74.1 plus 180 is 254.1. So there's our two solutions, 74.1 and 254.1 degrees. Now like that really nasty equation with sine, if you make tan equal to a negative value, we do have a similar problem again. So if we do inverse tan of negative 1.2, we end up with negative 50.2 which isn't in between 0 and 360 degrees. So we need to extend the tan graph backwards as well. 
So this one was equal to negative 1.2, so we'll draw that horizontal line on first. And you can see the two solutions that we're trying to find, they're here. Now if we extend the graph backwards, we'll have another asymptote at negative 90 degrees, and the graph will go like this. So if we extend our horizontal line backwards, you can see the solution that we've got is here, that's negative 50.2. Now it's a little bit easier than sine because of this property that it repeats every 180 degrees. So we just add 180 to negative 50.2 and we get the next one. So that's 129.8 and we add 180 to that one and we get the next one. So 129.8 plus 180 is 309.8. So we don't want that negative solution so we'll lose that and we want our positive 129.8 and 309.8 and they're your solutions. Now those are the basic sorts of equations, sometimes you have to do a bit of extra work before you even begin solving. Let's have a look at this equation here. We can only solve this equation when it just says sine x on the left hand side, so we're going to do some rearrangement. Let's add 3 to both sides. This will give us 4 sine x equals 3. And then we divide both sides by 4, if we divide the left by 4, we'll end up with sine x, and if we divide the right by 4, we get 3 divided by 4, which is just 3 quarters. So now we can continue with the question. We do inverse sine of 3 quarters, which gives us our first solution, 48.6, and then we use the graph to get the second one. So let's draw a horizontal line at 3 quarters, that goes here, and we can see the two solutions. The first one we've got, 48.6, and we want this one over here. So we'll use the symmetry of sine here. This distance here is 0 to 48.6, so 48.6 must be the same distance from 180 back to our solution. So 180 take away 48.6, is 131.4 degrees. So we have two solutions to this one, 48.6 and 131.4. So this one wasn't too much harder, we just had to do some rearrangement beforehand. Now before we look at our final type of equation for this video, we need to learn some new notation. Imagine you started with cos x, and you times it by another cos x. This is just the same as cos x squared, because we've times it by itself. Now you need to be really careful how we write down things in mathematics, especially when we have functions like this. If you didn't write the brackets for example and it looked like this, this would be confusing. Does it mean cos x all squared like we've done, or does it actually mean cos of x squared, where you take a value, square it, and then do cos of it? It's not necessarily clear. So what we do when we have cos of x in a bracket all squared, is we move the squared over here. You would read this as cos squared x. It just means do cos x, and then square the result that you get. You can also have sine squared x, which is sine x times sine x, and tan squared x, which is tan x times tan x. It's just easier to write it out in this form. So let's have a look at an equation with cos squared x in it. So remember the left hand side is just cos of x all squared. So the first thing we're going to do is square root both sides of this equation. If we square root the left hand side we'll lose the squared, so we just get cos x. And if we square root the right hand side, we need to do the positive and negative versions of this, so it's plus or minus 0.7. So we need to solve cos x equals 0.7, and also cos x equals negative 0.7. So we've got two things to do here. So we'll start with the left hand one. Let's do inverse cos of 0.7, which gives you 45.6 degrees. And then for the right one, we'll do inverse cos of negative 0.7, which gives you 134.4 degrees. Now to find the other solutions we're going to use the graph. So if we focus on the left one when cos x equals 0.7, we draw a line at 0.7 and we'll get two solutions. We already have one of those, 45.6, and we need the other one. So we'll use the symmetry. If this is 45.6 degrees we just take that from 360 and that gives us the other solution, 314.4 degrees. So we found another one. And now if we look at cos x equals negative 0.7, we need to draw that line on as well. That gives us two solutions too. We've already got one of those, that's the 134.4, and we need this one on the right here. So again, we use the symmetry of the graph, this is 134.4. This must also be the same distance, so we do 360, take away 134.4, and we get the other solution, 225.6. So for this equation, there are actually four solutions between 0 and 360. We normally write them out in numerical order, so we have the lowest one, 45.6, 134.4, 225.6, and 314.4 degrees. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Remember there are some exam questions in this video's description. 
Check out the video I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.